look at your resume, try to look at it objectively like, okay, is this doing anything for you or not? And if you saw this resume in front of you, would you hire this person? Opening up this file, a lot has changed since my first resume. For one, I passed my FE, so I included it up here. If you passed your FE, definitely include it up here. Uh, I included this LinkedIn thing. This is just very me, very my style. So I included it there. Your address, your contact, and get a Gmail account because that's what everyone's using nowadays. Uh, if you have a Yahoo, you could use it, but I advise you not to. If you have your, you're still using your EDU, your school email, and you already have a job for a little bit, have a different email, not your school email, because you're already a professional now. So the first thing that you write is education certifications. So the format hasn't really changed since my first resume. I just added some more details and some more sections, and maybe edited the titles of the sections to encompass more. So over here, you have education certifications. So I added certifications because I passed my FE, so I included that right here. Uh, if you pass your FE, definitely put it over here next to your name. The reason why, this is not super noticeable. Yes, if you read it, you know it means FE, but if you you have EIT after your name, immediately someone goes, oh, okay, I know they passed their FE. It means that most people assume, okay, you're on your track to getting your PE. So that's something you know that automatically is implied and really helpful to have. Okay, so this I wrote, um, I have my master's, I have my bachelor's, and then I have my transfer. If I want to take up space, I would get rid of this entire thing because I already graduated. So I don't know if it's super important. I still like that my minor is here because if I want to go into construction management, it should still be there. I didn't include my GPA over here because I didn't have a GPA when I was writing this. It was still my first semester in school. Now I do have a GPA, so if it's above a 3.0, I should include it there. Um, for honors, again, I'm including, I'm keeping this because Chi Epsilon people do have a society dean's list that automatically implies what type of student I was, uh, although it is a little dated because it's from 2018. So I might take this all out just because it's kind of taking up space. And then Broken College, I would definitely take this out because it happened 2016. And again, the point of this resume is if you don't need something and it's not doing anything for you, remove it. Getting onto the engineering programs. What I would probably do over here is I would keep this general software uh, just because it's still helpful. And the fact that I have the word video editor helps people know that it is video editing. I'm an instructional engineer. So take off all the things I don't know how to use or I haven't used in forever, take them out. It's really up to you. Go through your program, see what is and isn't useful. So now I'm going here, junior instructional engineer. So right away, junior instructional engineer, take, adding the word junior sounds, it just sounds amateur. I would take it out and make maybe add the word like project engineer. So uh, that sounds like a lot better. Better, And you don't wanna write structural engineer because that's reserved for people who have their PE. So for both of these I'd write, I'd write uh, project engineer. Okay, so let's see. So I would write developed because it's a past tense. A structurally sound plans or concrete would like a structure. Okay, that's good. But I would change this to developed. Inspect, okay, so this is all current tense. I would make this all past tense. It's inspected, designed, drafted, so then both residential commercial projects requires a very state and local code requirements. I would actually add over here which state requirements I did because I still have so much space over here. If you see this whole spot, it's empty, a whole line. So I would write, you know, New York, New Jersey, the tri-state area for me. And this would just kind of give it a little more validation to show like, hey, you know, I kind of know how to be a little flexible with this. Next, design like engineering research to code using engineering related programs. A little vague, but again, I don't mind it because it starts off with the action word you know, designed like agent masonry. And that's really what the point was. The second point was I have all my programs up here. So if they need to ask, I think it's implied. So that's why I think it's okay to be a little vague here. Coordinated drawing meetings. I like that because it shows I coordinated with other aspects. I would take out and other aspects. I just be coordinated drawings and meetings with, uh, between clients and architects, just because other aspects makes it sound a little amateur, like what well, other aspects. So I just say coordinated drawings and meetings. That's specific enough. And I think it just shows I interact with clients, architects, and inspectors. I think that's, you know, helpful enough. Then comes to my non-engineering related stuff, so teaching assistant. I already have two other jobs plus what I have now. I could just write one liner, teaching assistant, and people already know what that means. So I could take all this out. And then intern, all this was just me trying to write like, hey, I know what I'm talking about. Reading it now looks like I don't, which is kind of the point of why I would remove it. And I just keep the one word intern just uh, hey, you know, I worked at that place. If you want to, you know, reach out to someone to know how I work and my work ethic, reach out to them there. I think everything else is, I, I do already nowadays and it's implied and it's so much more than an intern does. So therefore I would take all that stuff out and give me all that real estate space. Uh, topic moderator. So I don't like add value to the discussion increase. I reword the beginning and I don't like add value. 
So that's a little generic or a little vague. So I'd write something a little bit more specific of what I actually did. Okay, webmaster. Uh, yeah, so webmaster, I think it's self-explanatory what a webmaster does. And it wasn't really like a lot of hands-on. It was a little bit of hands-on work, but not enough to write down what I did. Presence, again, I might, I'd probably take this out again because I have other experience to write. I have mentor right now, I'm part of the ASC mentor program. And I have other leadership activities that I could put here. I'd also, I, I like the word leadership activities. I'd probably keep that in there. But if I want to change it, maybe I change it to like extracurricular. Depending on the company, if a company's looking for extracurricular, I put the word extracurricular. So it's just a little more obvious what I mean by leadership activities. And then construction captain, I get definitely gonna take this out. And not because it's poorly written, but just because I already said I coordinated meetings with architects and clients. That's way more important than with other students, especially now. So I take this out. I definitely keep this in just because placed first in all sections of regional and top 10 nationally. I'm very proud of that. That's something, you know, this is just for me. So I'm going to include that. I probably remove these eventually, but event coordinator, this was just to show that I coordinated person organized and all that stuff. Again, I think that is shown enough through my other actions. So looking at this resume, I did take out a whole lot of stuff, but overall I'm going to be adding another for work experience. I'm adding what I'm doing now. And that's probably going to be at least three bullet points. So that's going to take up this whole space. And then it gives my resume a little more room to breathe. Maybe I could spread this out because to me it looks a little blocky of how it is now. But yeah, overall, this is how I would critique this resume, me knowing all everything about me. So I'm a little more critical of me and removing a whole, like just sections because I know it, it is or isn't relevant for my particular path. So for you, you could definitely do the same thing. Look at your resume, try to look at it objectively. Like, okay, is this doing anything for you or not? And if you saw this resume in front of you, would you hire this person? Or does it look a little bit like all over the place? And if you need help with this, I'd say edit your resume, walk away, come back in 20 minutes, and then edit it again. And do this as many times until you'll really see like, okay, you know, there's not really much to edit or nitpick. For me, I really haven't looked at it in a while, but at the time, this made a lot of sense for me. Part three is gonna address how to apply your resume to LinkedIn and how you can make your LinkedIn really nice. And as always, stay civil.